Hey, this is Mad Matt from Budget Boosting. Today we're going to talk about turbos versus superchargers, the difference between them and their similarities, and several other factors involving both of them. All right, we'll start off with turbocharging. And I'm not going to go into turbocharging too much because I've already covered turbocharging in shopping for turbocharging and turbocharging back to the basics. So we will also link those up on this video as well so you can brush yourself back up on turbocharging since we've talked about that a lot. Supercharging, on the other hand, we haven't talked about much at all, actually. So we will talk about turbos versus supercharging. First off, look at this turbo kit here. It's a bank sidewinder turbo kit, for example. Great turbo kits, awesome quality, and a very marketable price. You start looking at superchargers, and they get rather expensive. Like, for, look for example, to find a carb approved California Air Research Bird supercharger by Edelbrock. Great supercharger. It's compliant with all California's restrictions, but look at the price. It's kind of hard to budget a supercharger when you have to deal with carb, but it can be done. You just have to have some money. Okay, there's two basic kinds of superchargers, and I'm going to cover them. One is centrifugal supercharger, as this Vortec right here. It's driven by your engine accessories, whereas your turbocharging systems are driven by exhaust, which is normally waste. So basically the turbocharger is a supercharger that's driven by exhaust gases, and a supercharger is driven by accessories, so it goes with the engine RPM. Whatever the speed of the engine is going, your supercharger is spinning with it. However, there's gears to make your supercharger spin much faster than the revolutions of your engine. So like say your engine turns over once, the supercharger is turned over three or four times. So you're actually getting boost that you can use right off the line. You don't have to wait on boost with a supercharger. Boost comes right away. The second type of supercharger is a root style supercharger. It's driven by twin screws. Twin screws and driven by your accessories. So what happens is, engineer goes through your intake, gets compressed by these screws, by way of the engine accessories and forced all this compressed air in your engine as the engine spins right off of idle. So even at idle you're running boost. The second you get on your gas, instant boost response, throwing you in the back seat. Mind you, if you already have traction problems, supercharging will increase that by a lot because all your boost comes off, off the line and throughout the mid-range and the high range, superchargers kind of stabilize, whereas a turbo will continue to push you very hard until red line until you basically have spun that thing as fast as it will go, regulated by your wastegate, which I've covered in other videos. Okay, got the turbos, centrifugal supercharger, and root supercharger. Okay, now prices for superchargers are a lot more expensive than turbochargers. Because you can find and budget shop turbochargers all day long on eBay and find very reasonable turbochargers, put them together as a kit. You can do it yourself or buy complete kits. You know, complete kits anywhere from a couple thousand dollars all the way to you know, thirty thousand dollars, just depending on how far and fast you want to go. Superchargers, on the other hand, the cheapest ones I can find, even on a budget, is around two thousand dollars so it's very hard to budget shop a supercharger because they start around two thousand dollars for just your basic small block Chevrolet which is the cheapest engine to tune under the sun so that in mind I'll just give you a few examples of the prices of superchargers you got this Edelbrock E-Force for example great supercharger the big selling point on this supercharger is 50 states legal including California's very stiff carb standards. They're very difficult to deal with, but this supercharger is carb approved, so it's legal for use in California, but at the tune for about 7500 bucks. So, you know, kind of hard to go budget here. So the cheapest superchargers I've found are about $2,000. The more expensive ones, uh, just the superchargers themselves, not even including installation, eight, $9,000. 
seven, eight, nine thousand dollars, not including installation and tuning. Now there's shops that will install them and tune them for you, but they cost upwards of twenty to thirty thousand dollars for the supercharger, the tuning, and the installation. Which, hey, if you have money and you want to go fast, that's the way to go. Pay a tuner to do it. But like us, we're on a budget. So budget supercharging, around two grand and up. Budget turbocharging, three, four hundred dollars and up. So it's kind of simple for us. We like to go the turbo route because we can do that on a budget. Supercharging is a lot harder. Now advantages of supercharging versus turbocharging. The advantages of supercharging are off the line response with the exception of if you're having traction problems. Awesome off the line response. Boost as soon as you get off of idle. Disadvantages of supercharger is it takes up a lot of space. Look at all your accessories and your space cluttered by supercharger. Supercharger takes a lot of space so that's a disadvantage. And also the price is a disadvantage because they're so much more expensive. Whereas turbocharging, you can pretty much put a turbo wherever you like. It's limited to by how well you can fabricate exhaust tubing and oil tubing, oil lines, air pressure lines. You can put a turbocharger where your muffler used to be. They sell those kind of kits. You can put a turbocharger any way you want it, anywhere you want it, and as many as you want. So turbocharging, you've got so many options. We're supercharging, you don't have a lot of space, you have a lot of restrictions. It's got to be under the hood, it has to be driven by your engine accessories, or it has to be driven by your engine accessories, and it takes up a lot of space. So there's your disadvantages. Your power curve on your supercharger is strong off the line and kind of gets steady from mid to top end. It's not really violent acceleration like you would with some large turbochargers. Large turbochargers give you smooth off the line and as soon as you hit the turbo's power curve, violent acceleration all the way to red line. I like that. I'm more of a turbo guy. Okay, well. Then there's another misconception out there. Some people think that you cannot do it together because I'm thinking to myself, hey, I have a really large T4 turbocharger. It doesn't start pulling hard till 4,000 RPM. So I have to let out my clutch really high to come off the line with this T4. However, if I had a supercharger off the line from idle to 4,000, I've got this mad boost from the supercharger. And then for 4,000 up, I've got this T4 turbocharger, idle to red line, extreme power. And there's people out there that think you can't do it. Well, I'm going to let you know, you can do it. Not only can you do it, it has been done, and it has been done with unbelievable results. Here's a good example. Hennessy Performance. They are awesome. Look at that. The 4GT, originally a supercharged V8. But Hennessy didn't stop there. They put two nice, powerful turbochargers feeding the superchargers for every time the screws on that supercharger spin, forced, high forced air from the turbos is getting pushed in that supercharger and giving that engine some mad boost. We're talking easy thousand horsepower and horsepower you can use. Off the line supercharging pull and power and turbos all the way to redline. So idle to redline, mad power. Just look at some of the performance numbers. 0 to 60, 2.8 seconds. Quarter mile, 10.6 at 142. And top speed, 245. However, they've also broke some records with this particular car. Go look around at the Texas Mile record holder. These guys over at Hennessy, they built cars that can go the Texas Mile at over 278 miles an hour. So do turbos and superchargers work together? Absolutely, and they work with a fury. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this discussion on supercharging and turbocharging, their advantages, their disadvantages, the budget, you know, shopping on a budget, you can easily do it with turbochargers. It's a lot more expensive trying to shop for boost with supercharging on a budget. It's very difficult because they're rather expensive. Very hard to find a supercharger within a very reasonable budget. 2000 that's about the best I've seen on superchargers. 
few hundred dollars and up on turbocharging. So there you have it. Superchargers and turbochargers. Well, thank you again for watching Mad Mad on Budget Boosting. If you like us, like us on Facebook, like us on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. And remember, check out our website, budgetboosting.com. And check out our new window stickers. They are awesome. And we're fixing to get a nice number of them. So please tell us you're interested in them. And we'll get those bad boys on order so you can buy them on eBay Buy It Now auctions. We'll sell them for about $20 a piece. And hey, budget boost your car. They look good and intensify. Well, thank you for watching. And this is Mad Matt. Remember, knowledge is power. It's horsepower. A little bit of oil on it, it can't really hurt. Just a teeny bit of oil to make it go in nice and smooth with the crank. Because this seal does prevent oil from leaking out of the engine. Now we'll gently put it around the crank. Well, run a little oil around the crank too. A little bit of oil around here to make it slip on nice and easy.